I just think they're they're ganging up on Trump as a way to try to disqualify him. And I just don't think that's right. And what about what they've done to Hunter Biden with indicting him for felonious gun ownership and tax evasion? I think they need to go after Hunter Biden however they can. But not Donald Trump. No. So there's the double standard. (laughs) Maybe. Hey, guys, Max here. And there's a certain class of elite Beltway political reporter who still believes that Democrats can win over Trump-aligned Republicans. Those reporters, most of whom have never been to the communities they're covering, have clearly never met these Trump supporters because they're well aware of their hypocrisy. The thing is, they just don't care. So there's the double standard. (laughs) Maybe. Now, if you follow the slowly dying world of print media, which before you get mad at me for saying that, I'm part of that slowly dying world, you probably saw the new issue of The Atlantic, where some of the country's most respected anti-Trump people all wrote big articles about the threat Trump poses to our democracy. Now that's all well and good and true, and it's important that we write about this stuff. But these folks are delusional if they think that that kind of thing is going to sway a single Republican voter. Because I've got some bad news for my DC friends. These people, they don't read The Atlantic, and they sure aren't taking marching orders from you. Republicans now live in their own completely isolated media world, and what they consume bears no resemblance to what's actually going on in our country. That's how you get people like this Trump supporter, who can't decide if the economy is actually terrible or great. The joblessness rate is down. People say inflation is now down and the economy is coming back, albeit slowly. Do you credit President Biden with any of that? No. No. Do you blame President Biden for the economy? Yes. I mean, I would say it started from petroleum when he first got in there, shutting the pipeline down. But if the economy is now recovering, uh, does he not then get credit for that? I would say no, because when you make it completely then you just bring it back to You don't get credit for the positive side of that. So let's break that down. Joe Biden's a bad president because he apparently destroyed the economy. But when this guy's told the economy's actually recovering, and by the way, that's the strongest economic recovery in modern history we're talking about, well, Biden shouldn't get credit for that either. For Republicans like this, America's always split in two. An economy that's both tanking and thriving. A Democratic president who's both senile and a criminal mastermind. That confusion is intentional, and right-wing media outlets do it better than anybody. But what about gas prices? This guy is pretty convinced that gas prices have shot up to record highs under Joe Biden after years of record lows under Trump. But what happens when Donald Trump himself disagrees? I had to save the oil companies. They were all going to go bust. I said, this is the first time I've ever said we got to get it up a little bit. I actually called Russia and the king of Saudi Arabia. We had a three-way call, and we cut back on the oil because it was so incredible. Helped fill up the strategic national reserves, and he's now taken all of that to reduce gasoline prices for cars just prior to the election very artificially. Now, I know that was only about 30 seconds long, but wow, there is a lot to unpack here. First, you have Donald Trump proudly declaring that as president, he fought hard to raise gas prices so that he could help oil companies, even though that means you paid more than you should have for gas at the time. It's also pretty rich to argue that Joe Biden is using oil from the strategic oil reserve for political gain after you just said you worked with Russia and the Saudis to rig gas prices to help your biggest donors. I mean, am I crazy here? So Joe Biden bringing down oil prices, bad. Donald Trump raising oil prices, make America great again. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying to think about how much paint you have to eat over a lifetime for any of this to make sense at all. I mean, Trump has got to be the first president in history to campaign on raising your gas prices. But none of that matters to Trump's base. For them, the economy is really just about the vibes, man. You know, the the price of gas is only a little higher now than it was on the last day that President Trump was in office. Uh, Do you think presidents have much to do with the price of oil, price of gas? I think, I think the, the, when they shut the pipeline down, I think he did. Yeah. And that, that changed it all there? I think so. And what about the pandemic? Did that have any effect? It may be a little, but like you said, it's... I think there's something more fishy about that pandemic. I think... uh, Ah, yeah, it wouldn't be a Trump rally without every conversation eventually jackknifing into a rant about how the pandemic was fake. These are the voters willing to do anything to cast their ballots for Donald Trump in November. 
somehow, I doubt they're going to be persuaded by the Atlantic or anyone else. So I want to open this up to you. What would you do? Can these voters see the light? Have you successfully persuaded a Trump voter that their views were wrong? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, make sure to let your MAGA friends know they're cheering for the guy who proudly raised their gas prices. And if you thought that was wild, check out this story. The division of the United States has all come from Obama. In what way? Because he's black. And as always, leave a comment below so you can let me know what I should cover next.